Hello everyone and welcome to this live sketchbook tour where I'm going to be sharing um, all the pages from this sketchbook that I almost completed on a recent road trip through lovely historic towns in my local state. It's fantastic to see everyone here. Uh, if you haven't already, please say hello in the chat. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. As I go through this sketchbook, you can ask me questions at any time. And then towards the end, I'm also going to talk a little bit more about my buildings course, which is starting on the 4th of October in 2023. Uh, and that'll be a chance for you to uh, ask me any questions. If you haven't already, um, as I said, please say hello in the chat. And also, I'd like to know how has your sketching been in the last um, month or so? Those of you in Northern Hemisphere, you're in summer. Have you been traveling? Have you done a lot of sketching? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. As always, uh, Chantal is here in the chat and I'm always relieved when she sends the message uh, that uh, you can hear me and see me. So that's good. Uh, it's always, it's always, we're always at the mercy of technology when we do these live streams. So I'm really happy that everything is working. Uh, if you have a question for me, can you put questions in caps at the start and uh, also include a little bit of context uh, because it's a little bit um, of a delay between when I say, say, say something and when you hear me. Um, so if I'm flipping through pages in my book, um, that that would be great. Um, how's your sketching been? So uh, yeah, I've been, I've kind of been a bit of a transition phase at the moment, gearing up for buildings. So I've been drawing a lot of architecture lately, which I haven't quite so much this year. Um, hello, just amazing to see you all. Um, Sandy, who's often the first one here, <laughs> um, sketching locally in this summer, most days, well done. Um, we've got people from all over the world. It's fantastic. Um, hi, Annette in Tasmania and Brisbane, some Australians and Canadians and lots from the States as well. Susan says, recently did some sketching on a trip to Germany, Oxford and England. Great fun. Lots of people stopped to watch and talk to me in Oxford. I, that is one of the best things about sketching on location is those interactions. So welcome. If you're just joining this live stream, I'm going to be um, going through this sketchbook uh, from a recent road trip. But at the moment, we're just sharing um, some some things about how our sketching has been going. So um, still going after missing a couple of months, says Jamie. Um, all set up to finish the teacups course that, that um, when life got crazy, that's fine. That's good. We're not going to be talking about teacups today. No teacups. No teacups. Coffee cups, but no teacups in this in this. Um, in the in this sketchbook okay let me go let me just check everything is um is there um once again if you have questions just ask away if you've got any general sketching questions that are completely irrelevant to what i'm talking about at the time if you just hold on to the end as well um that would be great um okay hello hello from brazil yes okay here we go let me go okay so here is the sketchbook that I um, I almost filled in six days. And this is a eight by 10 Stillman and Burn, uh, Stillman and Burn sketchbook. And before I start, there's always just a couple of questions that I get asked all the time. So um, it's the eight by 10 soft cover alpha by Stillman and Burn. When you see when I do writing, I often um, have lines, I have a guideline sheet for those and I use a fountain pen with um, uh, Herban Diablo Mentho ink. So you'll see that, you'll see that in a minute. So you'll see, see that a lot of the time. And I date stamp the date with um, a stamp by paper person called Southport. Okay, so that's just the first, the most often asked questions. Let's just get that, um, get that out of the way before we go. Okay, so this is my road trip. And in fact, I've never finished this page. I was going to add colour lights. But anyway, so I live here in Sydney and I drove three and a half hours to a little farm in this place, more, 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 more older. Uh, and then I spent spent um, five days driving around around here, around these historic towns in this area. So um, that's my map. <laughs> Incomplete. So anyway, uh, and then so this part, this sketchbook, I actually started with the map first rather than my materials, which uh, 
is often the case, but anyway, the material's on the second page. So this is actually a work in progress. So I kind of played around a lot. So this particular sketchbook, I had come off, I'd come off a month and a half or something of using dry media. Part of that was because my sister was in town and the second part was Faber-Castell sent me a box of supplies. And so I was using um, watercolour pencils and markers as a result of what was in that box. And so um, the, I continue that theme. So what I had with me was a bunch of watercolour pencils. Um, so they're just the Albert, Albert Dura um, watercolour pencils. I picked the pink that I never used. So I had a collection of those. I also had some markers. So most of the markers that I used were the um, Gold Faber Aqua Dual Marker from um, Faber-Castell, which is similar to a Tombow. And I also had a few Neo colours. So this is my little Neo colour palette. Uh, so these are Neo colour 2 water soluble. I also used some graphite. Um, the graphite was um, my favourite graphite at the moment, which is the Faber-Castell 9000 pencil. And I didn't use any watercolour. I didn't use any water. So this is a completely dry book, which is kind of fun. And I had made the, I'd taken watercolour with me, but I made the decision to start dry and see how I went. And I ended up thinking, no, actually, it's really good to test myself to see how dry media goes on um, a lot of things. Now, I can see uh, that Chantal's just put a lot of links in the chat. So there are, I've written extensive articles on each of um each of, each of my days, each of my adventures. Uh, so there's a link there um, to the road trip 2023. So, um, yeah, here we go. We've got the date stamp. We've got the lines, which I just explained. And what I decided to do was to try and have a couple of breaks as I was going along um, on the drive. So I actually stopped one, two, three, four, five. I didn't sketch in Bathurst. I actually stopped five times on a a three and a half road trip and the other funny thing was I had been using these Faber-Castell crazy colours that didn't have browns and greys and I had just like the day before or the sad day before I had pulled everything out of my bag and then chucked what was in my bag before that and I actually started sketching without any idea of what colours I had or anything so I've never done that before where I've just got to be completely Complete, completely didn't know my um, materials. So this is um, and the Blue Mountains. So I you've got to cross the mountains to get to um, some of these historic towns. So this is um, Orphan Rock. I stopped and had breakfast. Breakfast wasn't that exciting, so I just did a coffee. Uh, and this putting this coffee here became a theme for the the week. And then at the same spot, I went to, like you can you can see this lookout, and then you can walk along a little bit and do the Three Sisters. So I started doing the Three Sisters and if I was using watercolour, like the background would have been really easy to do. But because I was using dry media, I also didn't know my materials very well. I was like a bit afraid to start that. Plus, I was kind of wanting to get back on the road. Like I don't really love driving that much. So I kind of always a little bit anxious. So I then just did the important bit and left it. Um, and yeah, the blue theme and the blue mountains. Uh and I, I then I then just decided to leave it. So, you know, this is the thing about when you're working in a sketchbook is the fact that, you know, if you're doing a single piece of artwork, you want to finish it. But in a sketchbook, your, your sketches exist within a narrative of what's before and what's after. So sometimes having a really open white space makes a big statement as, as you're scrolling through through. Um, through, you know, as you're flipping through your pages later on, you think, oh, I actually really like that. It gives me space to breathe. So, um, yeah. So, the, I don't know. Is that something you'd ever do is just leave something incomplete and and just let the white space breathe? Because we'll see. I, on occasions I finish sketches. On other occasions I decide to leave them. So this then is... Um, I drove on another half an hour or something. I stopped at Hartley. I was intending to do a number of sketches in Hartley, but the building that I wanted to sketch was it was not accessible. They were doing some roadworks. And that kind of just threw me. It's like, oh, okay, well, what do I do? I don't feel like staying. I'll move on. So I ended up just doing a quick 10-minute sketch. So once again, as I say, these, um, you know, these sketches are all watercolour, pencils, markers, and a little bit of neo colour generally in the sky, but no water. Uh, and this was very, you know, it's quite fun to do a quick sketch in dry media. You don't have any waiting time 
and you don't have that kind of setup, get the paint out, get the water, get the brush, you can just go for it. Although sometimes it can be a little bit slow because you've got to actually fill in the big areas. So that's where this is balance between sometimes dry media uh, seems to be slower because you have to fill in the areas. But most of the time, I think it's quicker and it's certainly quicker to start. Uh, then I drove on to Lithgow, had lunch. Uh, so this time I did draw my lunch. And this was a case where all the staff seemed to see what I was doing. So it's funny when you go to a cafe and you sketch in a cafe, sometimes no one notices what you're doing and then other times everyone does. So this was a case when everyone, everyone did. Um, and you can see it's always fun to kind of try and tie um, the sketches together. So, you know, at the time I did that sketch, I did this sketch, and then later when I arrived at my destination and I was doing my nightly homework, I then decided to add the text and to tie the, tie the two together. Okay, how's it going? The chat's quiet. I always worry when the chat's quiet. So let me have a sip so I can catch up. So I then went, I went for a walk after my lunch and um, ended up finding a seat to sit on. So this is like my one of my strategies these days when I go out sketching. Um, particularly because this is a driving day and so I was kind of like, oh, you know, I'm not going to do like crazy, you know, sitting on the ground, all the rest. Um, so I found a, a bench to sit on this church and um, and then I did I did this quick sketch and once again the sky was added here. We're here. Okay, good, good. Okay. There is a there is oh, there is a teacup. Yeah, I know. I'm just not going to be. I'm this. I'm drinking from a teacup, but I'm not drawing a teacup. Okay. These are all and these are all coffee cups. So there's no fancy china teacup in this um, in this sketch. So another sketch, and then I walk back to the car. Now I parked. I think my parking was okay, but this is actually the Lithgow Tin Shed, which is the cafe where I'd been. And I sat down once again, a low wall, sat down and started and started sketching and got to this point and then I'm thinking oh I just want to get on the road I want to get that last bit of driving done um the last the, the last bit of the driving was on the narrow country roads I wasn't sure what the condition of the road would be like so I was kind of like oh let's I'm kind of a bit anxious to get going I'm anxious huh there we go anxious about the last leg of the drive um so can't do a calm sketch uh, 12 minutes might finish later. Well, this is another case where I decided not to finish it later, just to keep it as it is. And so you can actually see, um, you can see in this particular sketch, uh, the combination of water, watercolour and, I mean, watercolour pencils, and then the markers as well. So um, this is an incomplete sketch. You can see, you know, you, you can see how I'm working. Uh, and that's, I often make the decision just to finish it, uh, not to finish it, just to leave it as it is. Um, can you point out when you use graphite versus pen? It's coming, Jane. Okay. Um, Sandy says, these little towns are fascinating. Would love to see and sketch them. Yes, they are very, very cool. Um, it was a big, big discovery of my big road trip. So in 2021, just before we went back down into our really, really long second lockdown, I managed to do a six-week road trip. So a lot of these places I had visited, actually every place on this trip I had visited before in 2021, but only for like an hour passing through. So um, this was this was fun. Um, how do you decide which buildings to sketch if you're only in a location for a short while? So, okay, so, so Lithgow, I had been to with Lithgow with my friend Chris Haldane on that road trip. We had been to this cafe and I had remembered that there was this nice, church just up the road that I didn't get a chance to sketch last time we I only did like a two minute sketch while we were talking to the to the rector um and so therefore I, I decided that is the building I want to go uh and sketch and then when I came back and I crossed the the road I looked at this and it spoke to me so a lot of the times it um it's because I see something and I want to capture the moment or maybe I want to tell, I want to record the fact that I visited the tin shed and I wanted to sketch the tin shed from the outside. So there's a, quite a lot that goes into which building I, which buildings I choose to sketch. Um, so that was like the first day. So I was really quite pleased with how much I managed to get done on a, on a driving day. That was very good. So the next day, um, so Wandering Will said the page with the dramatic Blue Mountains ridges lends itself to sparsely 
sparsely sketched page on the right. Love that. Love, love the what the colours and the expressive techniques. Okay, great. So on the next day, this is like a geography map. Uh, I went from here through to Millthorpe. So this was the first town. So this is the town I had made a decision not to sketch very much in 2021. I just got coffee, done a quick sketch, and that was it. Um, so <coughs> one of the challenges of travelling in these small country towns is cafes are normally open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So Tuesday, thankfully, there was somewhere open. I got a takeaway uh, and then went for the street. So I, I sketched, this became the theme, is that my first coffee in the day, in the day got on this side of the page. And then I did these sketches later. Uh, so I remember someone telling me something about the blue door, how, the house with the blue door um, last time I was here. And this was just a little, a very quick little sketch, like this would be a five minute max sketch just to fill in the gap. Uh, and this is then when I really get into sketching these typical Australian buildings with these verandas, which are kind of fun. So um, other markers considered dry media. Uh, I consider them dry media because they don't have, they are, they are moist, but um, I'm not adding water to them. So that's why I, I, I call them dry media because there's no actual water. We could debate that. I don't know. <laughs> CS says, this is so amazing, last 18 months. I've been to literally every place Liz has sketched in this book. Love the Tin Shed Cafe. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so this is then sitting down, having my coffee because the cafe was closed that I wanted to go to. So I was sitting on the cafe tables, outside tables, and this is like, okay, right, Liz, you've got to get over, you've got to get into the mood for doing these complex scenes. So I find these type of scenes really difficult to sketch because they're really hard to do loosely because you've got to position all these thin columns, you've got to put everything in place, um, the, the buildings are going up the hill. Uh, and so I'm thinking about a lot of a lot of things as well. And if you go to my blog post, you actually see step by step, you'll see the incline drawing, I think, for this. Um, any nice nighttime sketches in this sketchbook? No, no. So I, um, I sketched in the middle of the day, I came back to the place where I was staying, finished my pages and then had a, a break at night. So this was like a really fun sketch to do. Um, once again, it's watercolour pencil, a marker, and then a little bit of, actually, I think there might be some graphite in the sky, some some um, neo colour. Uh, and then what I found was really fun is, um, is okay, the medium for the sky <coughs> is is it, it is you know i'm not exactly sure because <laughs> like a lot of these things are quite experimental is neo color there is some graphite in there so there's a couple of different colors of neo color and so my trick right and this is okay so this is this is something i've 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 shared so my one of the one of the things i use is actually a tombow blender pen to smooth in to smooth to smooth out the neo colors so i Doing what I'm doing is going to reduce the life of of this blender pen, and also you've got to be careful because the blender pen could have a, some. It picks up the color of what you're blending over, but that is what I have used for the sky. Which you'll notice the one of the one of the one of the problems is that it's hard to get in there without picking up some of the ink or some of the color. So you'll see these smudgy smudgy bits through here where when I've been blending the sky, it's picked up the ink. Um, so. Yeah, so one of the really fun things about these towns and the fact that I spent two or three hours sketching is I did multiple sketches from in the same town and often it was just the one street. And I really love the fact that I managed to sketch the same buildings a number of times. So this building here is what I'm calling the IGA building, the supermarket, and then there's a hotel on the side. So that's the first time. Um, and then it started raining, but the rain is a good. I walked around and then I um, try to find another view. And so the best view then looking down the street. So from up here, looking down the street, I had to stand up and it was kind of like threatening to rain. So I pulled out a graphite pencil and um, I, I have, I, I'm not big on using graphite pencil. If you follow my blog, you know, I've just started to use them again. So this is using the, um, the, 9000 from Faber Castell which I love and I just did this in about 10 minutes I think um standing up until the rain came and as you can see there's quite a bit of there's a bit of smudgy around I've just kind of learned to accept it 
Uh, and um, the reason why I chose graphite for this is because it's complicated. I was standing up and it was raining, so I wanted a quick, uh, a quick, uh, a quick technique for that. Um, and then I, so this is the IGA building. This is the hotel building. This is the other corner building. And then I walked down the street uh, and found another bench to sit on and then sketched looking up the street. So this is the building with the blue, this is the building with the blue door, the house with the blue door. So this is kind of like just testing to myself going, uh, you know, I would normally use the Fude pen for these, uh, but this time, you know, so this is how I would normally do street views, but it was really fun to play with graphite. Uh, Doug says good perspective and variegated shading on those difficult buildings. Um, question found that found the answer eventually about the markers. Thanks. Okay. Now this then is then I then walk back up the street. <laughs> this is me walking up and down the street. And then this now is that hotel building. This is the IGA building. This is the other the other corner building. So for me, I really love this idea that buildings are getting multiple views. And this is I'm back at the one cafe having having lunch. So this is another coffee cup, not a teacup. And that was my Mill, Millthorpe uh, adventure, which was like really, really fun to be able to, you know, I ended up not doing any maps just because I was uh, not sketching at night time. Um, and then I came back to my cottage. You'll see a sketch of the cottage later on. And I decided to do some views out of the window because there was like, um, you know, rolling, r rolling waves rain waves rain storms uh and um that was really fun so one of the things that when i travel and i go to country areas and i'm driving on my own on narrow country roads i see all these beautiful landscapes that i'd like to sketch while i'm driving but i don't know how to actually stop or where to stop to be able to sketch them um did i see the old blue car in millthorpe hmm, maybe not i was looking at the building <laughs> <laughs> didn't draw the car sorry um okay so next day I went to Blaney and Bathurst so Blaney is the is the main town just up here it's got a very wide main street and unfortunately I didn't really get to sketch it um so I drove up here and then I drove back to Bathurst I had no plan when I went to Bathurst so this <clears throat> this day was a bit all over the place <coughs> excuse me so once again my morning coffee this time the breakfast was nice, so I sketched the breakfast, and then uh, I don't know. I picked up my I picked up the graphite pencil. I did, it just picked picked it up, and I started sketching. And so I wanted to sketch something from the view, but like I was sitting on a veranda, looking down a veranda, and I didn't want to draw that hard perspective. So what I did was kind of like a bit of a composite view. So this is a veranda post here. That was the pot on the veranda, and then that was the view outside the veranda so this is not a realistic sketch but it's a good way of remembering two parts of my scene and kind of putting them together uh, so that was fun and then once again it was a bit of a rainy day so I drove around Blaney and found two buildings um, the back of the church uh, uh, and it was grey day flat Color, the colours, the values were flat, so I decided I just want to do a line drawing. Didn't feel like doing it, so that's when I, I picked up my graphite. And then I decided to drive around, and there was a James Barnett courthouse, which I didn't end up sketching the front of, but the back of it was quite interesting. So what's cool is that even though I didn't, I didn't actually sketch the main street of Blaney, the main street is included here, here, and here. So it's kind of like there's a couple of clues for me to tell me of where I am. Then I ended up driving to Bathurst. Now I was thinking in my mind when I did that Millthorpe graphite, wouldn't it be nice to actually go back to my Acryl graphite, which I used to use quite a lot. So when I went to Bathurst, I actually decided to go to Officeworks and buy some. I ended up not using them because I didn't want to use any water on them. So they're here, but they didn't. Stopped at another, another cafe for another coffee. And this sketch was purely just me experimenting with layering. So I wasn't trying to do a sketch. I just, it was a good opportunity to play with different different marker colours under the watercolour pencils. Uh, so sometimes sometimes I do that as well. Sometimes I just, I, I just want to experiment, but uh, I don't really care. So I, I pick a subject and experiment with it. I find that's much better than just doing colour swatches. Uh, and then here you can see this is oh, this is quite nice. It's like, oh, look at those clouds there. So that's once again using the Mia colour for the clouds. Then the main reason I went to Bathurst is because I wanted to sketch the courthouse. 
by James Barnett because in 2021 it was under scaffolding. It's this big elaborate building, <laughs> and I I I wanted to to um to warm up before I started doing that. So I I found a table a, t- a picnic table, sat down, sketched the lining church. Now some of you might notice that there's a bit of piece of paper here. I wasn't happy with my spire. I had drawn it too short, so I actually stuck a piece of paper over and and corrected that part of the sketch. <gasps> Shock horror. This is one of the things you can do in a sketchbook, right? Um, and then when I came to that, I got, right, okay, I've got to sketch this uh, courthouse now. Oh, don't feel like doing the whole thing. So I just zoomed in. So I zoomed in to the main part of it um, and did a, a two 15-minute 15 15 sketches. Now, I'm very quick because I have a, a lot of experience sketching buildings so please don't compare my sketching time with yours. Um, but I also have a lot of techniques which I have developed over the years, which I share in my buildings course, which enables me to be able to do these sketches quite quickly. I'm not, I, I am thinking about perspective, but I'm not overstressing it. Like I'm just, I'm using my pointless perspective techniques in a lot of these, um, these sketches. Um, so that was, that was really fun. And then I had a third coffee and was very excited to find a cafe that was open past 2.30. So <laughs> very good. And then this is me sitting in my car across the road, wide street, angled reverse rear to curb parking, um, just, you know, f- filling, filling in the gap. Uh, and then I drove back to Blaney and drove around the outskirts of the town trying to see if there was any interesting landscapes I could see from the outside, and it wasn't. So this is another one of those sketches where I was not really invested in the sketch itself. I was more playing with some different techniques of how to combine the materials that I had with me um, at the time. You can see some graphite scribbles in the sky. So this was just purely play experimentation um, for my, my sketch. Um, just trying the techniques. Okay, any questions? While I sip on my tea, my next up car core. So <laughs> I knew there's only one cafe in car core and I had looked before to make sure that it was open on Thursday. So that's why I waited until Thursday to get to car core. Um, and once again, I started my sketching for the day, sketching the coffee and putting it in, and kind of in, connecting it in with this column of text. And then I was sitting at a picnic table, so I decided to draw a tree just so that people can't can say, okay, I do draw trees as well. <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, okay, so do I use any sort of fixing on the graphite? So I have been experimenting with spectrofix. I knew this was going to come up. Let me just get it. Hold on a sec. So I have been trying this. This is a um, milk derivative fixative. I don't think it's very effective, but I am using it. And the problem, actually, I was looking at that just a moment ago before you asked. The problem with it is the spray isn't really is re- isn't really fine. And so sometimes you actually see drop drops of 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 liquid. Um, I'm probably too close to the book as well. So you see drop a drop of liquid that is come because I'm using water soluble materials dry sometimes this actually um yeah I have drops on them um so uh so that's it um consensus to admit people from these sketches there were no people in these towns to draw <laughs> I mean seriously there's no there's cars but there's no there's there's no there's there's very few very few people um in the, yeah so it, that's right. There was like no one walked past while I was sketching this. Uh, after I'd sketched it, someone did. Um, yeah, no one in a cafe. <laughs> no one on these streets. It was Monday, it was Tuesday. So um, yeah, so I started being. They, these these towns are pretty quiet. Um, so yeah, I mean there is someone probably one person walked down every ten minutes. Um, but I'm focusing on the buildings particularly. Um, so. So Carcor is another one of these historic towns with a street. This is another courthouse by Jimmy B, which I haven't sketched properly. Uh, and I was sitting here and a big camper van came and blocked my view. And I just went, oh, how long are they going to be here for? Uh, oh, uh, I don't know. That kind of, I lost interest in the sketch. I thought if I come back another time, the lighting will be different. And so I abandoned this sketch um, because 
because of because of that. Okay, there was a person there, but <laughs> and then I walked up and up and up the hill, up and around, and I did these two sketches standing up. So I'm trying to uh, do more sketching standing up. I find it a little bit difficult to control everything, like make sure my lines are okay. But this was uh, a good exercise. Uh, and then I came back and um, found a bench and then started sketching. So this is then this side of the street. And the sun had moved quite a bit. So what's fun in these a lot of these towns, if you're there in the middle of the day, is the sun goes from being on one side of the street to the other side of the street. So this then is a sketch that I have no idea how long this took me. But anyway, I sat there, sketched, and then I went up to the cafe, which is in this building, and kind of finished it off while I was having my lunch. And you know, this is one of those ones where I was going, okay, should I put should I put sky or not? Um, and I decided to leave this one white because there's quite a bit of the sky on either pages. Um, okay, so I transferred my Spectrafix to an inex inexpensive fine mist spray, and I'm much happier with the results. Okay, that's what I've been meaning to get around because the spray on this bottle is not great. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so then a few more smaller sketches. So there's some really interesting, uh, interesting scenes. I actually I, I prefer to do street scenes where um, there's overlapping shapes than just like looking down these foreshortened buildings. So this was a section. Um, that I did. I also did a couple of windows and then I did a quick building as I was um, leaving town. Question when standing up, how do you support the soft cover sketchbook? No, I just, this particular, I don't carry a board around me and that's probably part of the reason why sketching up is not great. As long as, as long as your heart, you're a good proportioning, once you get like, I mean, even this one was sketching that, I had enough pages there. It's 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 okay. It's it's firm enough. It's stable enough. It's not great, um, but that might be another reason why <laughs> sketching's turning up is hard. But at this stage, I'm halfway through the book, so it's 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 pretty good on both. But no no support board, nothing else. Um, okay, so that's then car core. So same thing, you know, a number of sketches in a few hours when I was there, uh, and then I came back early. So I was kind of, I was going out after 9.30 because I didn't want to drive with any frost on the road. And then I was coming home about three o'clock before four o'clock because I didn't want to be driving when there could be a danger, risk of kangaroos jumping across the road. So that just gave me a narrow window to go out in the middle of the day, get a morning coffee, get a lunch, and that's it. And so this then is the little cottage that I was staying in. Um, so it's, it was it was fun to do this. Um, I'm, I always look hard for a picnic table. Yeah, well, I actually just sit on benches. So a lot of the time my sketchbook is just on my lap. And um, anyway, I've kind of gone away from support boards mainly because I find it quite uncomfortable. The paint tin is, at the, is like at the top of the book and I find it the balance is doesn't, doesn't feel comfortable. So these days I prefer to sit, have my book, I sit on a bench, have my book there. When I'm using watercolour, I will hold my watercolour in my hand and then on the bench next to me would be the water container. Um, so that's the way I'm doing. Um, can you share briefly your steps in laying out the scene, um, the buildings course? So in my blog posts, I, I do share. So I do, and, and you can kind of see it in here, I set out the main volumes of the buildings first and I definitely have a... Um, a step by step of this building. So I set out the main volumes of the buildings, thinking about perspective uh, and maybe the major division. So I don't know if you can see the wind. The, the, there's some there's some um, pencil lines through here, and then I go to ink straight as soon as I possibly can, and then start using a lot of the techniques from the buildings course about creating um, thicknesses, thicknesses and depths, um, and then making making sure I have a clear light and dark working from the main volumes to the main divisions to the windows that way as well. So, um, yeah, the, this is definitely using um, the building, the concepts from the buildings. Uh, and then on the last day, I drove all the way to Canoundra, which was like an hour's drive, which is about the limit of what I wanted to drive. 
And Canoundra is my favourite town in New South Wales. Well, Golgong's pretty cool too, but Canoundra has the best main street for sure. So this is the name of the town. It's it's written Canawindra, but you pronounce it Canoundra. Okay, so it's got a, a very cool name. And this is a amazing main street. It's got lots of grand buildings, lots of quirky buildings, all kinds of styles, and it's not touristy. This this street did actually have people, but by that stage I had <laughs> I decided just to draw people. I didn't even draw them. Um, and um, it's delightfully run down as well. And so what's interesting is that this is this is full of just normal shops. And so by about 2.30, but yeah, 2.30, the, the, the place is deserted. People only come into town. Um, a lot of, like, you know, farmers and people coming into town to do their chores. So it's very cool. So I'm sitting here having my coffee, looking through a veranda to a um, hotel. And um, this is another one of those streets where I did multiple, multiple views. Um, and then this is redoing a view that I had done in 20. 21 which I think it started raining I didn't finish uh so you know has, there's seriously not that many people that walk on these streets they're all main down in here um so this is pretty um complicated lots of foreshortened like trying to defy, dis, decide on the on the verandas and the windows um lots and lots of fun um and what I'm very partial to extremely partial to is a main street that has a curve. So this has a curve and there is a big old hotel pub on the on the curve, which you'll see in the next thing. So this is another one where I can see here's this brick building, which I'll sketch again. Um, and then this then is, I'm walking down the street, here is the pub on the corner. This is, you know, a bit of a, um, you know, a couple, of, a couple of other quirky buildings. Now, I could have done more to this, but this is where I kind of reached my, my limit of um, amount of detail. Um, this is, a, you know, I do more precise, in a way, more precise uh, drawings when I'm working with this dry media than if I was uh, watercolor. Uh, so that's as far as I got, and I and I paused um, here and could have done more. But I was like, I love this street so much, so much. <laughs> I really do. It's like, and not only that, but there were a lot of benches around. So it was kind of like, okay, can I go and sit in every bench? I walked up and down the street, I don't know, maybe at six times while I was there. So this is like sitting in a bench in the sun. The light wasn't the right way. And then I just quickly did these two graphite sketches. And I just, I just loved doing them. They just, like graphite is just slides across the page. It's just so fun when I see a scene I think I'd like to sketch but I don't want to do another detailed sketch because it's kind of like mentally a bit tired so I just did this sketch and what's what's interesting here as I started thinking about oh look at this I didn't draw everything and yet it describes describes the element the most important element so I started thinking about my work in some new ways and have some half-formed thoughts uh, and so it kind of took me, you know, five days to get to this stage of like really, um, you know, the creative juices are flowing and my brain start thinking about new techniques. Uh, and then I turned, I said, same bench, turned the other way, do uh, another view very quick. Went back to my car for some reason. Then I, I thought, oh, actually where I parked is very cool. So this then is back to the ink and the colour. But I decided I wasn't going to colour everything. I was just going to do a bit of partial colour. So you can see just so many, everything is interesting angles, different different combinations. Then I had lunch. It was 1.30. I looked, oh, no, it's like 20 past one. Go, oh, no, there'll be nowhere open for lunch. But thankfully the, the, the cafe had um, the kitchen closed at 1.30, so I got lunch. Anyway, so this, this is another, um, this, is, this is that brick building. I'm sitting near the hotel on the curb doing this, so quirky building. I tried to do a marker sky, sky um, and I won't do that again. But anyway, we'll try. Um, this was one where I actually did colour afterwards. So I coloured this one immediately when I got back to the place. So I won't, I'll try, if I colour something, I'll colour, try to colour as soon as I possibly can. And then one final sketch. I didn't really want to leave. I wanted to stay. I just love this place so much. So this is one final sketch. I have actually done... A live stream with a photo from this part. This is the cafe where I was. That's that hotel again. So once again, let's think. Oh, look, there's kind of a person, and I think there might be another person. <laughs> That's about it. Okay. Um, 
was there people here? No, it's pretty. It was pretty. It was. It was pretty. You know, pretty deserted. So my, the fact that there's no people is like showing you how quiet these towns are. So that was so much fun, and I kind of really wish I had had another. T- like I could have spent. I could have spent a week in this town. I reckon sketching everything. But it was then time to go home. So this then is um, driving home, stopping for breakfast at Blaney, the same cafe, stopping um, in Blackheath for lunch. This is a little bit out of order. And then I did a really, really quick, this is like five, ten minute sketch of Garbutt's Leap um, using mainly neo colours here. So this is really loose and free, um, not trying to be too precise. And I thought, oh, I wish I'd actually experimented more with the neo colours during during the week um but and then that was that was it about the only last thing is just the the colors the colors that I use the most but um there you have it that was my six days of exploring different towns um anyone got any other questions about it so what was great about this was um it was great not to have a lot of driving to go from place to place it was really fun to experiment with dry media and I did I was like oh I wish I could um, you know, I really miss watercolour in, in certain times. Uh, and But I think the main thing that I discovered was the fact that I started to get some interesting ideas right towards the end. And so for me, five days of sketching was just getting me going, right, just starting to really get into the flow and then I had to come home. And so I know some of you go out sketching and you go out and you do one sketch once a month, you know, and you wonder why you, you you know you don't get this flow. Well, I think you've really got to get out and do multiple sketches in the one day, but then also do do them in multiple days. Uh, and you know, I find these these scenes very very difficult, very very difficult to do, uh, but fun. I've got techniques for them now, um, and uh, yeah, just it just it was just really fun. So next time, I'm definitely got to go away for two weeks. So my idea is maybe I have two bases um, where I go. Um, I love that. Okay, so MK is asking, do I like the gold fiber aqua? I love using the gold fiber aquas. Um, and yes, I continue. I definitely continue to use them. Uh, I've taken out a lot of the. I put watercolor back, uh, and I'm using paint again, which is very nice. Um, but I still have a few and few, uh, you know, a few in because they're just they're just easier to put down big big shapes of color i've only need a couple of couple of lines um so um yeah really you know really really fun i'm keen to try some graphite uh aquarelle as well um but yeah so that then is my road trip any tips on drawing the road the um road trip map well the road trip map is exactly the same as drawing you have a map there um and and you just you just draw it. And this is not this is this is not um, totally accurate. <laughs> it's good enough, but it's not totally accurate. Um, I actually have tips on drawing maps inside my sketchbook design course. Um, I also am a little bit sad that I didn't include any maps of like road like aerial views of the of the streets of these towns. Um, but I wasn't. I was trying to not. Put myself give myself to oh that's so funny i put three backwards um not putting not not putting so much pressure on myself to finish my pages because that's the thing when i do these road trips the homework takes quite a few hours like two or three hours every night and it can get very tiring um to to do that um come back to bathurst soon yes i didn't i went to bathurst without a plan so the question are what buildings to sketch i didn't actually sketch very much in bathurst so it's like there's a lot in bathurst and uh, part of it too was that I was walking after this cafe. I was walking up the, up Keppel Street to do some sketching, and I realised I'd left my secondary bag at the cafe. So by the time I'd walked back, picked it up, I was like, "No, nah, couldn't be bothered." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> do you ever sketch uh, sitting in your car? Yes, yeah, some of these. This is in my car. Um, I, look, this is in my car. The, the all these are in my car. I always find it's just so much nicer to be outside. I just, if I could, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I feel like when you're in the car, if you use the car as a as a safety net because you're too afraid to be out in location, I feel like you're missing out because there's something nice about sitting on the streets. You hear the people and everything. Um, okay, so um, thank you, everyone. Now, let's just talk about, so 
the Talking About Buildings course, I am going to be hosting a, I am hosting a live version of my buildings course coming up starting on the 4th of October. So let me just zoom in a little bit and I'll just, uh, so if you've got any questions, um, more questions about the sketchbook, just ask them. If you've got any questions about the buildings course, let me just make sure that that's zoomed in and sharp. Uh, so the buildings, uh, the buildings course um, is part of the Urban Sketching Bundle. So this is a course that is built on uh, the foundation of foundations and watercolour and also some of the ideas that we do in edges. So it is best done after you've done those courses and is very, very closely tied in many ways to um, foundations. Um, and and so and so that is the course that we are going to be going through for ten weeks, starting on the fourth of October. Um, <coughs> um, I can see Margie asked a question. Do you enter lettered comments at the end of the day, or at the time? Most of the time, at the end of the day. Sometimes at the time. Um, uh, you bring lifeless streets to life so easily. How do you manage the light and shading to give depth? Well. It, that is something that we look at inside the buildings course, Doug. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and I don't feel like they're lifeless. I feel like there's spaces and there's um, history. And like, I know people think buildings are boring, but like, I love to see the human element in the building. I love to think about why they designed that way. Um, what was the original architect or the builder? Why were they doing things as well? Um, so that's why for me and that's a big a big theme of my buildings course is I want you to all to fall in love with buildings as much as 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 I do so this is just from the from from the buildings page on the on the website so there's actually four main lessons and normally the course is spread out over 12 weeks but because of December we're kind of condensing everything so we're going to be spending two weeks for each of the main lessons so we've got these four main lessons then then there's also a perspective lesson in there. So that's how we're doing it. And Chantal will already done it. <laughs> She's so good, isn't she? Um, put in the, um, the the FAQ page, which has a list of um, the dates that we do the lessons and also the live streams. So the idea behind a live version is that we have the existing course, which has um, on-demand videos and written content and replays of previous live streams and exercises and forum. So we work through that course together following the same timetable. So we're working through the lessons at the same time. And then each week we get together towards the end of that week to um, do a live stream just like this where uh, I can answer questions, review concepts, do a demo, uh, review work. It's kind of a combination of some of those, all of those. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be doing. So if you buy buildings now you will be able to be part of these live streams for free if you've done buildings before you can be part of this for free as well um, and um, my courses are designed to be done multiple times so uh, there yeah there's a lot of content in there and so the idea is you go through and you pick up what you can and you come back and you hang out with us again um, okay so just I've just got a couple of, of, of um, Images here just to go through some of the main concepts of the buildings as well, a buildings course as well, just so you know um, what we'll be looking in, looking at. So you know, one of the important things is that you've got a really complicated building and look, buildings don't need to be sketched perfectly. This is quite quirky in many respects. And so you've got to think about buildings in terms of edges, in terms of shapes and in terms of volume. So that's something from the foundations course. That's the core of all my sketching. And um, particularly the the volumes section that's a main thing is that you look at this building and this doesn't relate to that to that building if you're, if you're wondering this is a different church but you see the various volumes and then with the volumes you add elements and you subtract things um yes all the classes the classes the the lessons are all pre-recorded in the classroom and then the live streams are an extra bonus and absolutely there's replays so you don't mix any. Do you add, ever add water to your watercolour pencil? Yes, I do do watercolour pencil, but I normally actually put paint over top watercolour pencil rather than water, but yes, I have done that. So there's lots of examples of that on my um, on my blog. So we start, we start with small buildings as well. Um, 
little buildings, not just complex ones. And we really think about um, what are the main elements and how do we make our buildings look three-dimensional. And a lot of that comes down to details about windows and making sure roofs have thicknesses. Um, and if we zoom in, we zoom in and we draw all of those details as well. So it's a, you know, a lot of things. These are some of the, the, the cottages that we sketch, which are very fun from Tasmania. And I could see a few people. I know Annette from Tasmania. There might be other people from Tasmania. Uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, so there's co conversation about the live stream. So, yes, the live streams are available immediately afterwards, exactly like this live stream. So they're like this is a public live stream on my personal YouTube channel. The other ones, they're, they're, they're run the same and you can you can watch the replay. If you run late, you can actually start watching them afterwards as well. Uh, so every time we draw a building, we think about we think about the volume. So this is the, the one of those cottages. We think about the volumes and we think about the little elements and that's how we look at them. And then we also think about the lines. Um, and I know a lot of people think buildings, sketching buildings equals perspective and nothing else. And so in this course, I talk about all these other things that are more important than perspective. Perspective is important, but it's optional and it's only one step. And so there's a lot more to buildings than perspective. And I also have a very fun, practical way of perspective, not so technical. And so one of the things that we do is in the weeks before we get to perspective, I start talking about the fan, the left fan, the left fan and the right fan, and seeing how um, lines actually are fanning, they're tapering, they're not straight. And then we then get into uh, talking about perspective after we've understood how to see vo buildings in terms of volumes so we know that we we know how to draw the main volumes and then we apply perspective just to one part of that uh, then we also look at how to tackle really complicated buildings so this is a really really old sketch um, so this is what I call working structurally which is working out the main divisions and then progressively working to the finer details and and, and 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 this this is really this is the way to do big buildings so you don't get lost in them. I can see Peter's asking a question. Maybe partway through foundations, um, will I get enough out of buildings without having all the foundation skills? Yes, I think uh, absolutely it's worthwhile j jumping jumping over and joining the buildings, particularly if you've worked through that first the first four lessons, the edges, shapes, and volumes. They're the 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 most important. Uh, but I've had lots of beginners do buildings and get things out of uh, get things out of it. Um, so if, as long as you've started foundations, I would definitely recommend you check buildings out. If there's anyone in the chat that did buildings, I mean buildings is designed for people with experience. But if you're a beginner and you have a positive attitude that you're going to go in and you can pick up what you can and not 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 get so overwhelmed that you're not going to keep going, um, then absolutely. Uh, I recommend my buildings course. Uh, this is the same techniques as that previous sketch, but showing that my um, my courses I teach concepts so that you can you can use these concepts for any style. You don't I don't want you to just copy me. I want you to learn these strategies so that you can apply them to any building and to your own style. So this is um, using the same concept as this building but being done in a much looser way uh, and then the fourth lesson we talk about mapping light and dark which is all about really very clearly seeing those main volumes and seeing which sides of the volumes are in light and dark and so that is I mean here we go here's a veranda building so that is when I'm when I've been on that road trip and I'm doing those complicated scenes which is basically a row of these buildings I'm using the same techniques I'm thinking very clearly I have a very clear image in my head of light and dark um, and um, and so that's that's also what we what we do in a fourth lesson and then just because this is fun um, two of the original demos for the core 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 course were actually filmed on location in Italy so this one in Venice and this one in Vicenza as well uh, and because buildings have such an incredible variety there's just so many different types of buildings and they're so different every time I go through um, buildings with a group I actually ask the group to suggest 
really difficult buildings for me to sketch. So I'm not just sketching things that I'm comfortable with. So this is a combination of some of the sketches that were, some of the buildings that were suggested by the group. Uh, and um, and you can see that I'm sketching them in a whole lot of different ways. You know, the you know the two of these are quite are, are quite neat. This one doesn't have any ink lines. This one doesn't as well. This one is modern, more volumes. Uh, and so there's a lot of different styles as well. Um, and asking, um, I'm going to be travelling October 4th of three weeks, but want to take the buildings course. If I sign up for the first week of November, will I have access to the replay? Yes, um, but, but Anne, you might you might want to sign up now, and then you could actually start going through through the lessons. You can go through the lessons beforehand as well. Um, Monica says I took the buildings before foundations, and it was fine. It was a fun course to take. That's great to hear. <laughs> it's it's always hard to uh, hard to give blanket advice because I know everyone is different. But um, totally, there is enough there. There's a lot in the course, so it's um, it's a it's a um, very useful course uh, with lots of content in it because you see there's lots of different buildings. So um, here's another one of the buildings of the week where you can see I was playing with edges, volumes and shapes in order to sketch this. And, it, and often I don't do these, but I think about these concepts while I'm doing. And it says six years ago, um, it was accessible to me as a fairly inexpensive sketches. Um, still back, still still fall back on some of those techniques. Ah, Vicenza, yes, yes. Okay, and here we go. Um, just, you know, just to show you that these techniques can be used in a loose way and this is not a course about being absolutely precise about everything. Um, this is, you know, ink and wash. I mean, most of the, most of the demos are in ink and wash, uh, but you can see this was actually paint first and then ink over the top because I didn't describe everything with it. Um, I also, here's, here's also his pencil. This is the, that Aquarelle graphite with watercolour. Venice, Venice, Venice. <laughs> and then this is the same building the next year um, with just paint only. So I like to share share the techniques and how the concepts work no matter um, one, you know, what what. What you got, Sandy saying, building of the week is worth the whole course. Fun and instructive. Yes. Okay. So, um, oh, I wasn't going to show you. I was just going to show you if I could find it. Have you got any? Have we got any questions about buildings? Um, have we got any any questions? I want to just show you that while I'm just looking for. Um, it's in this sketchbook. It's in this sketchbook. I'm just looking for something. Oh, here we go. So this is something that I just recently posted on my blog and Instagram, which is a sketch of the Queen Victoria building using a lot of the concepts of from the course. But you can see it's all over the place. It's like it's got this kind of curved perspective. I'm looking up. Um, you can see there's a lot of it's a lot of detail, but. If you look at my blog post or on my reel on Instagram, you'll see that I mapped the whole out in the major, major divisions and kind of did some guidelines, like the centre line is really important. Uh, and then in this case, I actually worked step by step. So I didn't do one step all the way across, but at each step I did the main division before I got caught up in the detail and then I moved my way across because I wasn't sure how much energy I would have to do the whole sketch. I ended up finishing it. And just because we're on live as well, um, and I'll just I'll just share this. This is what I mentioned this on my I'll mention this on my blog, right? I made one major mistake, which just drives me nuts. But anyway, and um, there's a big mistake in it. Um, but you don't you don't notice it. If I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't notice it. And the, the and and the big mistake is the fact that this I drew this arch too big and so this one is too compressed so this here this this here this, the arch is here this one is way 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 too big it should have been more something like this um and that's what I consider a big mistake because the rest of it is loose and free and lots of fun and then I I, I realized these amazing amazing thing about how the fact that that these two arch these two arches have a different number of shafts in the piers and how they're put together and while I'm sketching them going this is so cool so I said I wasn't going to mention I wasn't going to mention teacups but while I was sketching this those of you who've done my teacups course 
I was thinking about the pattern studies that we we're doing, going, buildings are just like teacups. This is something I've said for a long time. So anyway, so I was thinking about teacups while I was doing this sketch. Um, so there you have it. Um, there is uh, my live, my flip through my recent sketchbook and then a discussion about some of the things um, that that's there. Do I go over curved perspective? Um, huh. This is a good question. I might, but if I don't, this time when we go through, I will definitely add curved perspective into the live stream on the perspective week. Okay, so this is one of the fun things. You get lots of extra bonus things. So um, Peggy says, I, I love teacups. Okay, yes, funny. I haven't I haven't sketched any teacups. I've sketched a thousand teacups in a month, a couple of months there, and I haven't kind of got back to it. Um, but anyway, so, and teacups is not on this list because it's kind of separate. So just again, just showing you if you're new to um, sketching now, this is your first live stream that you've seen of mine. Well, it's been great to have you. So I have two, I, my courses all kind of build on each other and particularly they build on this foundations course where I share the main concepts and also watercolour. So I have, I have two bundles, um, foundations, which is the drawing, which we're just wrapping up. A group has been going through. Watercolour, which I can tell you I'll, I will be, doing a live version of at the start of uh, next year. Sketchbook design, which is all about how to keep a sketchbook, how to make those nice pages, how to do that nightly homework to make things, um, you, you know, really make, make every page interesting. Uh, and I will be, I will be, I will be doing a group event of that as well. And then buildings, which is here, which I've just been talking about I'm doing a live version of that and then next year I will organize group events for both edges and watercolor on location these are the ones that are more focused on urban sketching on sketching out on location uh, and I will say that the buildings course the idea is to sketch buildings on location but it's not an absolute requirement so there are some exercises from photos and then each each lesson there is an outdoor exercise but if that's difficult for you because of weather or whatever it's totally okay to do from photos as long as you're aware that that's not a complete substitute for sketching on location um any final questions before i wrap up um and um i see a hello from mexico just when i'm about to wrap this up any any final questions um, thank you so much. It's like it's actually really, really fun to do these live flip throughs of my my sketchbook tours because it gives it's a nice way of wrapping up my book and um, for me to kind of really cement the ideas and the concepts and just to share in a in a more interactive way um, as well. Um, so if there's no more questions, um, I would love to see you in the buildings course. Uh, the building, the link to the buildings course is down below. Um, we are starting on the 4th of October, 2023. If you're watching this video at a later date, you can, you can sign up for buildings and work through it as self-paced course anytime you like. Um, but I'm so excited to be going through it with weekly live streams in, as, as a way of, you know, catching up with you, connecting with you. It's just the best way of learning when you have the online component that you can work through, uh, on, on your own during the week and then we have a live session to catch up um, there's always such an amazing community inside the classrooms which you can see through the chat here already um, I love you all so much and I I mean I haven't I haven't been I haven't done a live version for a, a couple of months so I'm really really looking for uh, for that is a question about sketching with watercolor pencil there is a lot inside foundations about watercolor pencils um, Sandy's going to be there which is good wouldn't be a live version without Sandy and some of you others. <laughs> um, yes, Chantal's just put the link. Um, thinking about trying the markers. Yeah, I'm just in love with markers. I just think they're um, – look, nothing will replace watercolour, but watercolour has this barrier when you're out sketching on location. So you think, oh, I'd like to sketch this. Oh, I couldn't be bothered to get my paints out. But if you have markers or you have pencil or something, you go, okay, I'm just going to start. And it gets you sketching more. Um, Serena, hello, Serena. Done all of uh, Liz's course and they're so good. Thank you very much. Thank you all for all your comments uh, and everything. Uh, and um, I have to see you in buildings. See you there, 4th of October. Okay, see you. Bye. <laughs>